Hi, AFI Movie Club. I'm Sean McKittrick, producer of Get Out. Hi, I'm Bea Sequeira, co-producer of Get Out, and I graduated in 2003 from the AFI producing program. This was one of the first things that we shot in the house, and I remember our production designer freaking out because we were basically showing the whole house. You know, we found like a week before we started shooting, so we had to be ready. There were a lot of nights on this film, yeah, and the bugs were not kind in Alabama. No, they, they never are. Again, we didn't find the location until like a week before shooting. We had been looking at bigger houses that, that told a different story of the level mm -hmm. of wealth they had. And when we came to this, Jordan instantly was like, oh, I can make this work and this is why it would work. And now I couldn't imagine the movie taking place in all those other houses that we scouted. It would be like a completely different movie. It all converges on this really kind of elegant walk through the house in the middle of the night. Not to mention Chris's overwhelming anxiety about being in the house, having the other two that are kind of these creatures stalking around him. Yeah, and up until then, they've been odd. The, something we've put mm -hmm. now is like, they've crossed over as like, oh, this is just not a safe place anymore. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't surprise anybody for them to be holding a knife in, in any one of the scenes. The moment that's coming up here, when we catch Georgina in the background, I just remember Take after take, we kept speeding her up. And each time she got faster, it was scarier and funnier in this weird way. We were the stand-ins as we were blocking all of these scenes. We are also like in the photo stand-ins, like we have the photo storyboard. And I seem to recall Jordan said I was probably the worst stand-in he's ever dealt with. And I remember we had this whole thing of like, are we going to shoot in two houses? And we decided to shoot in one house so we could come back in and out as, as possible. Jordan really loved the, the kind of endless forest around this house. You know, he felt Chris's character would feel so trapped that there's just nothing out there. Marcus, remember he pulled his hamstring on like the second take of him running, powered through running. He was such a champ, but yeah. over and over again. <laughs> Yeah. Pulled his hamstring. <sighs> Georgina, Betty's character, being kind of between herself and the grandma inhabiting her at yeah. the window there, I always felt like she was kind of in between. And also like that, how she's like, you know, covering the scars. That's the thing that you realize like, oh, she has those scars and then Walter is always wearing his hat. Those are things that you, you know, after you watch the movie again, you will realize. And they feel so malevolent in those moments, which is so, you know, in retrospect, confusing in a good way. Like the little things, like making that, that light that goes on out of movement. Do you realize how dangerous smoking is? And all those little things that uh, like make that scene totally work and be scary. Jordan always, from the day he first pitched me the story um, over coffee, he always discussed about how audiences will constantly yelling, particularly black audiences will yell at the screen, you know, get out of the house. He's different. No shit. Why is he dressed like that? It's not that, it's everything. I, he came to the party with a white woman like 30 years old now. Sex slave! Oh shit! Chris, you gotta get the fuck up out of there, man. You in some eye-wide shut situation. Leave, motherfucker! No. You gonna be a, hello? Never wanted to, uh, Chris's character to be a dumb horror trope. He would never allow himself in a certain situation or a situation that would, you know, is so obviously dangerous for him. And this, the prophecy fulfilled of when we screened it that first time and, and we get to the, towards the end of the film and the audience is screaming, get the fuck out of the house. Rose? Rose! Rose, give me those keys! Rose, give me... Even those keys. Rose, no! No, the keys! And the audience going on that journey and screaming when they had to scream, laughing when they had to laugh, and like a complete riot. And I was just like, oh, they, this is going to be huge. That was literally, you know, the, the best moment of, every, of the whole thing. And, it, you know, beyond the success and all that stuff, because we all believed in it yeah. very early on, but it was a very very, very small group of us that believed in it. And everybody else was just, hey, if it doesn't work, it's not that much money. You know, it will be like this weird little movie. I was like, I think it has potential to be much more than that. And all of a sudden it's like, oh no, it is bigger than, than, than all of that.